a venerable tradition is enjoying something of a renaissance in Europe. The Grand Tour has been revived as the EU's chief negotiator on Brexit journeys from capital to capital to agree a common front. In contrast to the agonising in Britain, which lost its EU ambassador this week, Michel Barnier has so far achieved rare unity on his travels amongst the remaining EU member states. Mr Barnier will want to be constructive, I've no doubt, uh, but he will want to secure the best possible deal uh, for the 27 member states of the European Union, uh, which, uh, a deal which maintains their integrity uh, and their fundamental principles governing their uh, internal market. But just who is pitching up in all those EU capitals? Is Michel Barnier a European federalist out to punish Britain? Or is he more of a deal-maker who will work hard to avoid a train crash Brexit in which the UK falls out of the EU in a disorderly fashion? Well-dressed, utterly charming, speaks beautiful English. I mean, everything's right about the bloke, apart from his views on the European Union. But I think Mr Juncker picked him to deliberately not see sense and to try and play hardball with the United Kingdom. <laughs> Newsnight has embarked on its own more modest grand tour of Europe to find out who the real Michel Barnier is. The Barnier story begins in his backyard in the French Alps, where he organised the 1992 Winter Olympic Games, one of his proudest achievements. Albertville, France. To the Paris elite, the Olympics marked Barnier out as a mere provincial politician. He wasn't a traditional uh, French you know, politician. He hadn't been to the right schools. I mean, I could even say at times they were a bit sniffy about him uh, uh, and, and you know, uh, said things that, you know, he's a ski instructor or something, uh, uh, as if he, he didn't merit the, these high-level jobs. Perfectly plausible. You know, given our national differences, um, in a British cabinet, in a sort of job like Minister of Transport, or you know, I mean, I'm, I'm not sorry, I'm not being too condescending, but you know what I mean. I don't think he'd be, I don't think he'd be Home Secretary or Foreign Secretary, although these days. Within a few years of his triumph at the Olympics, Michel Barnier made his first mark on the European stage as the French Europe Minister. He made some useful acquaintances. Michel Barnier hails from the Gaullist tradition in France, which is suspicious of what it regards as the Anglo-Saxon worldview. But Barnier is no die-hard Gaullist. Michel Barnier is a Gaullist. He is a Gaullist social. And his project for Europe is a project of the Europe of the nations, and not of a federation. And I think that in the negotiation that is to come, he will respect la nation britannique euh, parce que euh, il est marqué par l'histoire et euh, sa conception est celle du respect des autres. His Brussels breakthrough came in 2010 when Michel Barnier landed one of the biggest jobs in the European Commission as Internal Market Commissioner. This gave him oversight of the City of London, prompting howls of outrage. Frenchman, City of London, he'll be out to um, turn it into rubble. Of course he didn't. And certainly I found in the, the beginning of my time dealing with him in the aftermath of the crisis, uh, very keen to talk about the failure of Anglo-Saxon capitalism, because he knew that played very well in continental Europe. Uh, I think two years later, as I was leaving uh, the Treasury, uh, more attuned to jobs and growth. And actually, once he started to put arguments about regulation in the context of the impact of jobs and growth, he, sort of, he got that because it's a very retail political argument. So very, very sharp politician. Zooby, zooby, zoo. To some, the silver-haired and suave Frenchman had a rather high opinion of himself. Some um, British ministers or people who've dealt with him thought he was rather vain. Um, I remember somebody comparing him to David Miller, than which, um, and saying that walking down the corridors in the Treasury, he would st stop and look at himself in the mirror and comb his hair. 
Barnier's track record in Brussels and as a leading French politician made him the natural choice as the European Commission's chief Brexit negotiator, but his appointment prompted fears that Britain would have to negotiate its way out of the EU in French. Ever the diplomat, Barnier addressed this in his first public outing. English or French? <laughs> Since that appearance, the European Commission President Jean-Claude Juncker has embarked on a nifty bit of Brussels footwork to have Barnier upgraded to become the EU's overall chief negotiator on Brexit. Crucially, he is of the project. He is a true believer in the religion of building the United States of Europe. And so he's the man that they're going to trust. And I, I wonder, is he looking to get the best possible deal? for German car manufacturers, for French wine producers who so badly need the British market, or is he actually going to say no to hell with European industry, we're not worried about exports, we just do not want to be seen to give the British a good deal, because if we do that, other countries will follow. One of the most senior Brits to have served in the European Commission questions the idea that Theresa May will eventually be able to sideline Michel Barnier and cut a political deal with Angela Merkel if she is re-elected. I think uh, uh, one should look perhaps at uh, the experience of the negotiations which took place uh, before the referendum uh, where perhaps some similar thoughts uh, were expressed and turned out not to be fully, uh, fully realised. The fact is they'll decide they'll decide um, and we must hope that um, we can get as decent a deal as possible but it's ultimately going to be decided in Paris and Berlin and some of the other member states. They know each other a little Jonathan bit Fall is doubtful about one idea doing the rounds in Whitehall. Can you buy access to the single market? It's not something that's on sale in that way. Uh, I find that rather extraordinary. You're a member of the single market uh, as a member of uh, uh, the European Union or the European Economic Area uh, or you're a foreign country outside it and you conclude agreements with uh, the European Union if you want to and it wants to uh, regarding uh, the way in which your goods, services, capital uh, uh, and people move around uh, or uh, you don't and uh, you have uh, one or two international rules which apply uh, and that's it. And that's a choice to be made by both sides. But the veteran Brussels official, who's just retired after 38 years' service, believes the UK does have one card. Michel Barnier, uh, you should remember, has, has done a lot of work in recent years on defence and uh, strategy issues. And he believes that the UK is absolutely crucial to the defence and security of Europe, the continent. Uh, and... Uh, Franco-British uh, cooperation in defence uh, and security matters is extremely important and he will want, and I think all Europeans will want, uh, a way to be found for that to continue. The Barnier Grand Tour will come to an end this spring when Theresa May triggers the formal start of the Brexit negotiations. At that point, he will find himself across the table in Brussels from his former Europe Minister counterpart, David Davis. In private, David Davis believes there are two Michel Barniers, the hardliner who vented frustration over Britain's approach at an informal meeting last year. But the Brexit secretary is expecting to meet a flexible dealmaker once the formal negotiations are underway. But one of Barnier's oldest political allies warns the UK to work hard on building a relationship with him. Je pense que si on veut que la négociation aboutisse, il faudra effectivement qu'il y ait une certaine confiance qui s'installe entre les deux négociateurs en chef pour pouvoir avancer. Parce que si la négociation doit aller au blocage, l'Union européenne n'a pas grand-chose à y perdre. La Grande-Bretagne a beaucoup à perdre dans un blocage de la négociation. C'est parce que le Royaume-Uni est effectivement le demandeur dans ce cas. Our own little grand tour is now at an end, and Britain will soon move on from five decades of history when it embarks on the process of leaving the EU. The nature of its departure will depend in large part on a French outsider who bears no ill will towards the UK. But ultimately, Michel Barnier will never do anything to undermine his cherished European project. <laughs>